What's up and welcome back to another video. We're once again out here on Staten Island at uh, the airfield and it is a gorgeous, gorgeous day. Came out here to fly after donating blood. If you haven't donated blood yet, go do it. If you've donated blood before, go do it again. Last week I did a review of the DJI FPV system and now with its lower price, I was kind of thinking that it may be a great option for somebody who's looking to get into FPV. Before when the goggles were $550 uh, plus dollars, and you were looking at a total sunk cost to get into digital FPV at around $1,000. That was a little much to recommend to any beginner, but now with the goggles being under $500, ELRS making some of the bind and flies with DJI significantly cheaper, you can now get into digital FPV for around $700 to $800. Still a ton of money, but it's a lot more manageable than it used to be. And so I was thinking, if I was gonna recommend somebody go out and get into FPV right now, what would be my recommendation for a beginner kit? And today I wanna to run through what I think would be an excellent starter kit for a beginner into FPV who's looking to get up in the air, fly, maybe do some light freestyle, create some videos. Uh, <clears throat> that's gonna be kind of what my suggestion really kind of centers around is being able to do that. First and foremost, I wanna start out with the DJI FPV system because that's obviously the most essential part of this whole video. And so for that, you're looking at the DJI FPV V2 goggles, obviously the only option for digital FPV goggles in this price range. While support may not go on forever, I do think that the popularity of the system, the reliability of the system, you're gonna be good for a while. I wouldn't have any worries about recommending somebody go out and buy the digital FPV system, especially as a new pilot, because it's really simple to use, very simple to set up, and it is extremely beginner friendly. On top of all that, I think for a beginner, the digital FPV system from DJI gives you so much confidence when you fly because the view is so clear, it's so sharp, it's so crisp. <clears throat> there is definitely latency there and it is variable, which can be a thing people are sensitive to. But as a newer pilot who doesn't have experience with FPV at all, I don't think that lag is anything to be worried or concerned about. Next for the beginner kit is the controller. And I think the controller that I'm using now might actually be a perfect option for a new beginner pilot. The Radio Master Zorro is a fantastic remote, great gimbals, easy to set up, has a module bay, but also has built-in ELRS. So whether you decide to use ELRS out of the jump or say if you wanna to toss Crossfire in there, it's a relatively inexpensive radio. It accepts all the standard modules. It's easy to use and it's a very, very good quality radio. Obviously you don't have to run out and get AG01 gimbals. I would not make that modification as a new pilot because the Hall Effect gimbals that are in there are phenomenal. If you feel later down the line, you wanna add some extra bling to your controller or you break the stock gimbals, it's easy enough to pick up those AG01 gimbals, toss them in your radio and you're great to go. For a beginner, I think that ELRS option is the way to go. It's fairly easy to set up. It is constantly adding new features that make using it, updating it and all the rest of that stuff even easier. If I was gonna recommend an external link or control module, I might suggest Crossfire just because of its reliability and range. But again, I wouldn't worry too much about it. If we're trying to keep the cost down for a beginner, for the goggles, DJI FPV V2, controller, Radio Master, Zorro, ELRS edition. If you don't like the gamepad remote, I would recommend going out and getting the TX12 from Radio Master. It's a little smaller, it's a little lighter, it's a little less expensive, still a fantastic radio. Can also accept those AG01 gimbals that go into the Zorro. And I think those controllers, either one, is a great budget option because it works with a simulator. They're very durable, high quality pieces of equipment and both come stock with ELRS built in. Now we come to the most important part of this entire video and it is the drone. And I would say there's basically two options to go down for what I would recommend is a beginner drone for most people. These two options each have their own specific place. Both are great options for pretty much anybody, but it comes down to what you wanna get out of your FPV experience. If you're looking to get into racing, if you're looking to get into freestyle, if you're looking to get into even fast cinematic flight, I think something like the Emax Baby Hawk 2 HD is the way to go. At around uh, between like three and four hundred dollars, 
The Emacs Baby Hawk 2 is a fantastic option. It is durable, the parts are relatively standard and easy to get a hold of, whether it's motors, the props, the frame. It can carry a small action camera like the DJI Action 2 or an Insta360 Go. Its batteries use a standard 4S with a XT30. Obviously you can add an XT60 if you want, but it's little light cells, so you're not gonna spend a fortune on batteries and it's going to get, up, get you up in the air and flying very, very quickly. I think that Emacs drone is a perfect start for a beginner looking to do some freestyle, some racing, and a little bit of cinematic flying, but not up close and personal. And that's where we get into my other recommendation. My second recommendation for the drone is gonna be for somebody who's looking to do more cinematic flying. If you're looking to fly indoors, if you're looking to fly uh, to grab cinematic video around people inside of buildings, I think the GEP RC Cinelog 25 is the best. It is a pusher configuration, so it's a little bit more capable of carrying weight. It's a little better flight characteristics for grabbing cinematic footage. It still technically can do some flips and flops and power loops and stuff. That's really not what it's designed for. So if you're going to get into freestyle, stick with that baby hawk. But if you really just want to use this as a cinematic tool, I say go get that Cinelog. Get into it, go into that direction. If you decide you're going to carry heavier cameras, uh, I wouldn't recommend that necessarily for a beginner because the more weight, the more uh, kind of, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, touchy or sensitive the quad can be to movement, which can be a little intimidating or scary for newer flyers. But overall, I think you're pretty much fine with any Cinewoop. My recommendation would be start small, start with that Cinelog 25, get up in the air, get flying. And that basically rounds out what I would say is my recommendation for the best beginner kit. I think if you're getting into FPV, Going digital is a great option. It'll get you up in the air, it'll get you comfortable. The DJI system is extremely confidence inspiring. And I think that for me was very helpful in growing my skills. So I feel like I progressed faster because of how good that DJI system is, allowing me to get comfortable flying into even stuff like this tree right here. I'm comfortable going in and out of those branches because I can see them. And that confidence from being able to see everything that I'm flying in and around makes it so much easier to learn those tight technical proximity tricks. And so that's why I would recommend for newer flyers, go get yourself a set of the DJI goggles, get a Zorro or one of those TX-12 radios. If you want to go crossfire, you can, but then go get one of the Emacs Baby Hawk 2 HDs. Or if you're doing cinematic, uh, you want to do more cinematic flying, get a Gep RC Cinelog 25. Either one of those will fill out a fantastic starter, beginner, digital FPV kit. All of the links down below for all of the stuff that I've just mentioned, I'll fill it out in basically two different sections, are uh, affiliate links with Amazon. So if you make a purchase from that list, I do get a small commission. That commission goes right into this channel, helping me build it, grow it, and do more things, review more things. And that pretty much rounds out this video. So I'm so glad you joined me today. If you have any more questions about starting to fly FPV, please hit up the comments below. I would love to answer your questions and help you get into this hobby that I love so much. As always, thanks for joining me in this video. Like it, comment, subscribe. As always, as every other YouTuber says, including myself, catch you in the next video. Bye.